Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord, keeper, evolver, sustainer of all the world. Wa salatu, may the prayers. Wa salamu, and may the peace. Ala rasulihi kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I greet you, dear Muslim brothers and sisters. I greet you. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Uh, inshallah, this evening, we just want to take a few minutes to look at something that we're all familiar with from the Quran that's a part of our everyday activity as Muslim, and particularly what I'm referring to is, is the Salat, our Salat. What we say in each rakah of the Salat, whether it's fought, obligatory prayer, whether it's sunnah prayers, and on other occasions, that's al-Fatiha, which Allah calls in Surah 15, Sab'ah, Madhaniyah, the seven oft-repeated verses. Allah says he's uh, definitely given us the seven oft-repeated verses in Qur'an al-Azim, the mighty Qur'an. So I was thinking over some things and just thought today, inshallah, we'll look at guidance, what we ask for, what is, is ihtina, what we ask for in the Qur'an and from Allah in every rakah, of our Salat. And so we just wanted to take a little time and look at that, look at that idea of guidance and, and what Allah says in the Quran, how he gives the guidance, what he does when he wants to guide uh, someone. And especially, it's always important the Salat and the guidance we ask for but in the time we're living in, it may carry even more weight that we want guidance in how to handle the situations that we're in concerning the coronavirus, this uh, pandemic, and all the changes that it has brought about. So, but, be, but before we go look at some ayats from Quran, we always, in some way, try to go with a, uh, a vocabulary with a vocabulary. Some words that's going to show up that we want to highlight that uh, may help us in some way. So, as always, always ask, take out your Quran, inshallah, take out your Quran, whatever translations you have, whether it's uh, Yusuf Ali, Assad, any of them, just take out your Quran if, if you can, if you're somewhere where you can get to your Quran, and we can kind of, when I reference these things, you can go ahead to Quran, which is what we should be reading as often as we could anyway. And as, whatever translation you have, like I said, uh, Malena Muhammad Ali, uh, Maududi, Pitdor, Assad, um, there's other, there's many translations, you know, some by organizations, and you have the noble Quran, and you know, so... Whatever Quran you have for what we want to go through is, is more than sufficient. English translation, English Arabic translation is good to have. If you just have all English, then that's fine too for what we want to try to um, look at. Look at. Uh, if you have the all Arabic, then that's good too, of course. So just, just moving along, and inshallah, we won't, won't be long. I, I kind of always say that. Um, so some, some, some vocabulary that's going to occur in our, uh, brief, uh, kutbah, our brief presentation. And here we start, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Here, some vocabulary, guidance, or here this says, I just put that Aleph a little close, but it's 
Ethdena Surata Mustakim. Or here to say Ethdena, pardon me, Ethdena. Guide us. Guide us all. Right? And we know where that occurs in Al Fatiha. But the word uh, Huda, Huda, this is Huda as it occurs in the Quran and um, uh, uh, Baqarah, Huda. The root letters is the soft H, the soft H, the Ha, the Dal, and the Ya, the Ya. Or in English, it would be H, but a soft H. In Arabic, they have, as we know, the hard H, uh, like uh, uh, Hemdu and Hemdu, or El Hakim, right? The hard H, and you have the soft H, right? Like in. Uh, uh, Watch her, watch her, watch her face, and here, uh, uh, guidance and guidance. Who dare? Who dare is guidance? There's a from the same root you get hadi, hadi, which uh, refers to a gift. It's like a gift, or offering. Uh, you may see sacrifice, like when we on Hajj, you make a, a, a sacrifice, but it's actually a gift. It's a gift. It's not the sacrifice itself, but it's like a gift or an offering, which we can understand most certainly from Allah, that guidance would most certainly be a gift from Almighty God, Allah, to us. But this is the word guidance that we'll be touching on from Quran in our uh, presentation. The other important word is uh, Saturu. Sadrum, Sadru. Sudur is plural. Sadr, 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 which is chest. Chest. This chest here with the uh, 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 the heart, the lungs, right? The chest, the rib cage, all that, that that covers that, right? But the chest, that's this word here, Sudur or Sadr. And its root is the Saw the hard S, there's a soft S and the hard S, the, the hard S, the D, and the Ra, the R also, which would be S, the D, and the R in English. But again, just like the H, uh, there's a hard S, Sudura, Sudura, hard S, and there's a soft S, like Salam, S, Salam, Salim, right? Yeah. Uh, this S would be like Saddaka, Saddaka, right? So here's another word to do it, chest or breast, chest, this area here. And this other word here, it is a few others, but we just deal with the three, is uh, Sharuraha, Now this is the hard H here. This was the soft H, it's a Sharuraha. And that means Sharuraha. His root is the, the sheen, sheen, like shamps, right? Like shamps, uh, the sheen, the ra, the r, as the r, and the h, okay? So just make note of these as we move forward into our presentation. Inshallah, Allah will guide us, and hopefully we get some information. And we always pray to Allah for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, for his mercy, for his forgiveness. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So, now, going from there, let us just go to Quran. Again, I hope you have your Quran. Go to Al-Fatiha, the opening. And, and from there, we're going to go to ayat, I have his ayat 6, which we always say in Al-Fatiha. And that's what we're hopefully looking at, guidance. But in the Quran, what Allah says, how he gives the guidance, which we're always seeking. Now, this form of uh, guidance is like a command. Like when the revelation came and said, Ikra, right? This is Ihdanah. Guide us, 
Very important. I had six. Eh, dene, it dene, surat al mustaqim. Okay? Guide us on the straight path. Now, what's interesting about this, and I underline as we pointed out guidance, who that, right? Hadi, right? Etc. Who that? Who then? Who that? It, it, it occurs in various forms, but it's always there with the root. So, but take note of this. It says, eh, the na. This na is we, us. Guide us. Surat al Mustaqim. Guide us, we're trying on the upright straight path. Very important. The ayat before that, it says, as we know, You alone do we worship, and you alone do we seek for aid. Now, what's so important about this, or to take note of, is even if you're praying by yourself, when we pray by ourselves, you making a rock, rock out, you performing sooner prayer or, or far prayer or whatever prayers you are, you're praying by yourself. Let's say that. You still have to say we. You still have to say we. You don't say guide me on the straight path. You still have to say us, pardon me. Eh, dene, surat al mustaqim. So that tells us what we can get from that, that this is a bigger picture. This is a big picture here. Because whether I'm by myself or in a group, I still have to say, guide us. Guide us. Now, where that includes us as an individual is we are part of that us, right? We are part of that, that group when you say, guide us. It doesn't say, guide them in the third person, guide them, like two people are talking and they say, guide them over there. It says, guide us. So even when I'm praying by myself, when we say, God, us, we are part of that us. But it's to remind us also that we are part of a group. No man is an island. No man walks alone. We are part of a community. We are part of a group. So it reminds us, just like when we say, assalamu alaikum. Even though it's one person greeting one other person, you still say kum, which is plural as opposed to cat. So... Just looking at this here, again, something we always have to say, so we just want to look here at guidance and what Allah says about the guidance when he guides a person. So again, Ihtina Surata, Surat al Mustaqim. Now, this Mustaqim, even though you see this L, this M, and this S. If you was to trim that, and this ta, you trim that, you get to the root. The root of this one would be a Q, a Y, and an M. Kaum, kiyam, yamel, kiyam, You hear mustakim, right? The first position of salat, kiyam, right? Katkumatu, katkumatu salat. It would be this right here, the kaf, the ya, and the meme, right? And so, mustaqim is guide us to the upright, this way. Kiyam, right? Akami salat. Establish the, uh, come to salat, establish the salat. Allah says, Lakat kalak nalin sanafi asani taqwim. Upright. So, really, you say, guide us on the upright path. Kiyam. So, this, you, you, if you was to trim this, you were looking for the root letters which carry the essence, it would be this Q, the Y, and the M. So, again, we read this. You hope you have your Quran. Uh, and again, like I got to say, uh, there's transliteration also. There's Qurans that have the English, the Arabic, and the phonetic part, right? The, the how it sounds. So, they have the English, the uh, uh, transliteration, how, how it sounds, and it's written out how it sounds, and the Arabic. So whatever, whatever Quran, whatever translation that you have is fine, it's good. And I hope there are various translations, because the, the, the more you read different translations, a better picture you may get. 
of some of the work uh, some of what's being said. Like you know, we read one translation may say, Rahman Rahim may say the beneficent, the merciful. Another may say, uh, most gracious, most merciful. Another may say, merciful, especially merciful. Right. And you know, uh, uh, merciful, uh, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer. So you read as many different ones, translations as 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 you can, to get a help help us get a better picture of what's being said, and and the best efforts to bring it over from the Quranic Arabic into English to help us help us get a, get the message a clear picture of the message. But anyway. Most importantly, and, and what I'm saying here is, I hope if you can, you have access. That you have your Quran. Please always encourage us to have Quran, read Quran, and I'll try to work from Quran. So now, again, Surata Mustaqim, guide us on the straight path. So, what is our point there? No matter how we feel about ourselves in terms of guidance, righteousness, knowledge, etc., we still always have to ask Allah to guide us. Meaning, we're never always there, so we can't say, hey, I got the knowledge, I got the guidance, I don't need it. No. If the Nasirata Mustaqim, in every Raqqa, we have to demand that. We ask Allah, Allah gave that to us. If the Nasirata Mustaqim, like a drowning man who's saying, help! So we're saying, if the Nasirata Mustaqim, guide us on the straight path, no matter where we are, how much knowledge we have, how righteous we might think we are, and we may be, and how much on point, that we still have to always ask Allah to guide us in every rakah at least five times a day, and in any time we recite al fatiha So, so that's emphasizing guidance, right? Okay, now, if in the first surah we seek the guidance, now, Allah takes us to the next chapter. The next chapter says something about the guidance. In the first, we ask for the guidance, right? And we're just highlighting certain things. Now, if you go to Baqarah, the very next surah, the second ayat, Allah addresses this, right? This is addressed. And how does it go? You have your Quran. Allah says, we'll say the, the first ayat, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim and say, Alif, Lam, Mim. But then it gives us, it takes us right back to Al-Fatiha. Dhalika al-Kitabu la-Rayba fihi hudan, 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 eh, the da, hadi, hudan. Dhalika al-Kitabu la-Rayba fihi hudan lil-Muttaqeen. This, this is the book, Quran, right? That's what I say. This, Quran, this. And if it was over there, it would say that. <laughs> it would say that. Say this. This is the book. This is the book. La rebe fihi hudan lil muttaqim. Wherein there is no doubt, no doubt, it is a guide to the mutakin. It is a guide to those who have taqwa. But we're just point, making this connection because in Al Fatiha, in every rakah, and I'm repeating myself over and over again, we demand, we ask for the guidance. Allah tells us where to find the guidance. Isn't that beautiful? It's the Nasirata Mustaqim. This is the book. There is no rayba, no doubt, no doubt in it. It is guidance for those who have taqwa. Now, I wrote the word taqwa because taqwa is so vast. Uh, taqwa, God consciousness and awareness of Almighty God. God consciousness, righteousness, right? Awareness. Uh, 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 God fearing, etc. Right, uh, 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 a loving fear of Almighty Allah, righteousness. Some may say discipline because Allah, you know, during Ramadan uh, in the Surah one eighty three, 
Allah says, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you. So you will have taqwa. So we're fasting and the end result is to give us this taqwa, right? There's, and some, some will say self-restraint, but that self-restraint is based on our loving fear of Allah, right? It's conditional based on your loving fear of Allah and not wanting to displease Allah. You will discipline and restrain yourself, right, from doing certain things. So this taqwa is, is, is deep. It has a lot of meaning. So I just put the word taqwa because we, we can write paragraphs on that. But you've heard that term. And also in the Surah Shams, Allah says, and it just shows up everywhere. Allah has it so many places. Uh, speaks of the soul, wa nafsin, wa that he's leveled the soul. And he says, that he has enlightened that soul with the taqwa. For alhamaha, fujuraha, wa taqwaha. You see? That Allah has enlightened that soul with, with taqwa, right? And a desire to come out of fujura. They translate loosely as as, the, as uh, bad, out of the bad wrongdoing. It, more, a whole lot with that too. But just stand here. And Allah says so many places, and I'm just thinking right off uh, Surah Nisa. O mankind, have taqwa for your Lord, right? Who created you from nafs and wahida. So we're dealing with guidance. Guidance, guidance. So the guidance is in the book. Okay? When we're praying out fact that Allah said, if you want guidance, if you are sincere, go to the book. And he, and he emphasizes, Dali kalaki tabu la reba. Reba. Like we gave in the cup by uh, Friday, that Allah says, if you have any rebe, if you have any doubt about bath, that the raising, He said, consider the fact that I created you from dust. We talked about that in the Juma Friday. So Allah says, la rebe, there's no doubt, fihi, fihi in it, that it is a God to the Muftakin. Okay, so we just connected Surah Al Fatiha with Bakara. Allah didn't keep us waiting when we ask for the guidance, okay? And he tell you where to find it in Quran. Stay in Quran, as Muhammad the Prophet said. So I'm saying, I leave you two things, Quran and my life example. Quran, right? And Aisha radiallahu anha has said, Muhammad the Prophet said, Salam, the living Quran. Okay, so here we have these two guidance mentioned here and here, right? Guidance. Now, okay, so now... Go to, we're going to go to sort of six, an ami, and translate it as the cattle, right? Sort of six. And the word an ami, if you listen to it, an ami, an ami, nitme, nitme, naim, right? We, we pray for Allah, we say, itna surata mustaqim, surata latina, an emta, an emta, right? Favor, right? Nitmat, blessful, right? So, an ami comes from the same root as favor, as, as blessing, right? Because what we can understand is that the cattle was a favor from Allah, was a blessing from Allah to humanity, to help us not only as food, but for travel, for carrying heavy loads. So, it's interesting that the same word for cattle in Ami, the noon, the aim, and the meme, also ni'mah, naim, bliss, right? So in that surah, in that surah, Allah says this. We're, we're, we're staying with the guidance right now, but I gave you a couple of words, sudura and uh, shawraha, etc. Look what Allah says. If you go to surah 6, ayat 125, surah 6, and hopefully this is coming out clear. Uh, uh, on our video as we're doing this to like the focus and I'll, I'll take pictures of it and put it with it anyway if, if you can't see it while we're talking about it it's important that as we're doing it that's why I say if you have a Quran uh, English and Arabic or just Arabic and even the, even the English because I'm going to say what it says and I wrote out as much as, as it can and there's different trans slight, slightly shades in the translation but this is very, very, very important. 
because we want the guidance Allah tells you is in the book, but how do Allah give it to you? Okay? Allah says, and you're in 125, and we're always looking for guidance. Allah says, Femen yuri di lahu and yeh di yehu. Here you go to guidance, right? This is guidance. The ha, the dal, and the yeh, right? Femen yuri di lahu and yeh di yehu. Whoever Allah wants to guide. Some translate this as desire or wishes to guide, right? Whoever Allah wants to guide, Femen yuri di lahu and yeh di yehu. Whoever Allah wants to guide, decides to guide. Very beautiful, very important. Says so much about our deen. Yeshra, Yeshra, set rahu lil Islam. Whoever Allah decides to guide, he expands. Remember the last vocabulary was Shavurah to expand, to, to widen, to expose out, right? Allah says, Yeshura Satrahu Lil Islam. Whoever Allah decides to guide, he expands. He expands. His sudura, remember I gave you sudura? His chest, his breast with El Islam. So we ask for the guidance. We say, Ittana Surata Mustaqim. Allah says, This is the book where there's guidance. Now, when Allah decides that you're going to be the one that He guides, Allah says, Femen, who, whoever He decides, Yeri di Lahu and Yeh di Yahu, Yeshura Satrahul Lil Islam. That Allah, and this word is very important, all of them is important, he expands. It doesn't just say he put Islam in your chest. You know, there's a surah called Inshara, right? 94, the expansion, Inshara, right? That Allah expands the sudur, expands your chest. Isn't that very important? That Allah, when he wants to guide someone, he doesn't say he put it on our head, right? Doesn't put it on our feet. Doesn't put it on our face. He said, where does it go? When he wants to guide you, he didn't just say he gives you guidance. He said he puts Islam. When he wants to go, look, he connecting guidance and Islam, right? So when he wants to guide you, he doesn't put something somewhere else. He specifically say, and he doesn't say he puts it. He say he expands your sudura, your chest with Islam. Islam is that big and our chest is like a balloon. When he put Islam in there, it expands the chest. And I hope we're focusing in on that. If you can just zoom in on it with that. How does it look with that one right there? Is it picking up? That's very important to me. So, I just want to make sure you can see that. And you and you have your Quran, so you're reading this. But there's some other information we want to touch with this because th this is this is the chest. But some will translate it as heart. But the word heart is kolb. Kolb. The cough, the lamb, and the back. And but they'll say heart because the heart is such essential in the chest. But that's not the only thing that's there is the lungs and the, that's very important for our life is the heart and the lungs. So the word is actually chest, the chest. So you see how, how beautiful it is? We ask for the guidance. He tells us where is that. But then if Allah says he wants to guide you, brother, guide you, sister, whoever he wants to guide, alhamdulillah, he says, Yeshura Satrahu Lil Islam. Now, he expands. Let's take a few minutes and look at the chest and expand. But he expands it with Islam. 
Understand that. That's so important with Al-Islam when he wants to guide you. Let's, let's take a few minutes and look at Sudurah, the chest. How do you expand your chest? When you go, you breathe in air, right? We breathe in the oxygen and you can expand it. If you lay down and you press weights, right? Difficulty, right? And you press it, you can be get muscle and expand your chest, right? So sometimes that difficulty, you can start, and Allah says, in the mouth, usri yusra, right? That it can be difficult to press 50, but the more you're doing it, that 50 becomes light, right? And then you can go up to 100. But Allah says when he put Islam in our chest, that he expands the chest with Islam. Now, what's in the chest? What's in the chest? We have three things, three major, I think you call them organs, in the chest, right? The, the heart and two lungs. And we know how important the heart is in, in, in on physically and spiritually. As Muhammad the Prophet said, there's a piece of flesh that's in the body. If it is good, the whole body is good. And if it is bad, the whole body is bad. And he pointed to the chest, right? But Allah says he put Islam in the chest, in the Sadur. Now, I always say for the chest, because those are so precious, our precious life jewels. Without our heart, we don't live, right? Without our lungs, if our lungs collapse, we don't live. So those are our jewels. So it's really the treasure chest. So just take Allah puts El Islam. In the treasure chest, in the heart and the lungs, if you think that's valuable, Allah put something in there that 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 is, that is even more valuable than that. That He puts Islam, He expands it with Islam. Now, what can we what can we see with that? In Islam, the heart and the lung, we know they work together. That that the heart. In the circulatory system, the air comes in the lungs and they connect with the blood, right? It oxygenates the blood and it circles around the whole body, right? For our life, right? Air, the same word for spirit and air or wind is the same. So he expands it with the true spirit of Islam, right? The life spirit of Islam. The true Muslim is what's inside, right? And matters are judged by intentions. But so he puts it in where? In the treasure chest where our heart, which we know represent what? Sincerity, affection, courage, love is even said to be the seat of wisdom, right? And Allah says he puts it there. And so when the heart, when you when Allah gives us guidance,